Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. Today I have the Metal Jacket by Metallic Raven for review. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a quick backstory about this. First, when I spotted this on sale, it was on Spin Scene and Roy on Spin Scene was having some pre-orders. And during about the same time, I think that Spinetic Spinners were also sharing information about these guys. But one of my friends in Korea and one of my uh, dance idols, I should say, <laughs> Uh, he was getting interested in spinners and he wanted to know what it was about. So I said, okay, you know what? I'll hook you up. I ordered one of these for him. I sent it over. I told Roy, please send it over to Korea. And then he received it and showed me a video on it. And I was like, shit, I got hooked. These guys look really cool, and really awesome. But at the point of time, I wasn't thinking so much about it. I wasn't like, you know, wanting to really get one until I saw that video that my friend sent to me. And if you guys know anything about the dance scene, then you probably know who this guy is. He's Ho Jin from Real Marvelous. So I saw his video on it and I was like, damn it, now I gotta get one of these because it looks so good. So I uh, got myself one of these metal jackets and uh, let me tell you something, I do not regret it. <laughs> now let me just give you a quick overview about this guy before I proceed to tell you more details about him, okay? It arrives in a little faux leather pouch like this and on the pouch it says PCC team and uh, there's a little joke here in Singapore that PCC is actually an acronym for jacking off <laughs> but yeah I mean this is their logo and you can see that they have a logo over here but like I mentioned this is by Metallic Raven so you can actually see PCC and Raven so I think that maybe PCC are the people that actually manufacture it and then the design is by Metallic Raven I think but uh yeah what irks me the most out of this I just really want to get this out of the way and off my chest but I hate the fact that this logo is not in the center of the button and I've actually seen a lot of pictures that other people have posted about their metal jackets and I've also noticed that this particular logo is not in the middle and it just pisses me off. It's almost, I mean, look, I don't know why it's not in the middle and it's just, uh, the first impression of this guy is like, my gosh, he's actually a lot smaller. I thought that this guy was gonna be a big bar spinner, but no. Now, since we're talking about size, look at this, compared to a stubby, it's not too much bigger than a stubby, not double, maybe about just like 30% longer than a stubby. And this guy is actually made of stainless steel and brass. Now, if you look carefully, there is some kind of a, texture on the stainless steel and this looks to be like some kind of a sand blasting or media blasting and then coupled with machine finish as well i don't know how this is done but it looks really good and on top of that i want to point out that the machining marks on the brass frame is exquisite look at that this thing looks so premium it's like it's almost like jewelry you know it's kind of like it looks like gold so here's a little thing about this metal jacket i think that it's called metal jacket because these four stainless steel accents, you could say, are kind of just slipped on. You could pull them out, you could pry them out, and you're supposed to lodge a screwdriver right underneath that ridge over there, kind of pop it upwards and it'll slide right out. And uh, cool people like Sean and Roy have gone ahead and I guess made this part red so it looks like Iron Man. And uh, I'm gonna post a picture on the screen and you guys can see for yourself, it looks really cool. So I think that if you make it blue as well, it'll look really good or just black or something, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, looking from pictures, at first I thought, you know, it's gonna be really, really sharp here and there. And I wanna point out that there are really some sharp edges in this corner here and there. But to contrast with that, the finish on the steel parts is just so smooth. It's, it's satin and soft and this gives you a very nice feeling as well. It's like a, I don't know, man, like a tactile kind of response, I guess. I don't know, it's just, it's really good to feel. This is like one of the spinners that I really just like to have my thumb on this side over here, the flats here, and just feel it down. It's really, really soothing and it's really nice. But let's talk about spinning, okay? It doesn't hurt. I'll tell you one thing off the bat. The sharp corners doesn't even hurt at all. And I'll go into more detail about that in a short while. Let's just remove the buttons and let me just show you guys the bearing and the bearing retention method. And it is very simple. The bearings on this guy is a 688 bearing and it is a push fit or press fit. The funny thing is, I think because of the machining marks, it goes in one way and comes out one way. There's no real actual lip, but it just kind of stops in place. So let me show you. You can push it out this way. And it doesn't really take a lot of pressure to just remove the bearing or pop it out. Let me just do that properly. It doesn't really take a lot of pressure or effort to remove the bearing and pop it out. But by feeling the edges here, I don't even feel a lip on either end. But here's the funny thing. This guy will just go in and it will stop 
flush. I'm just gonna apply pressure straight up. Look, it just stops right there. I didn't even have to do anything. It's just completely flush. And it just sits there. I don't know how this is done, but that's really cool. Let me just show it to you again. Just gonna, really quickly, I'm just gonna push it and not stop. And you'll see that it just stops right there. It's just completely flush. One, two, three. <laughs> I don't know how that works, but that's really cool. It's not gonna slip out easily as well because it's quite snug in that spot. So that actually makes bearing removal and cleaning very convenient. Let us next talk about the buttons. They are concave, they are a little bit small. I've heard quite a lot of people giving feedback that they felt the buttons were a little bit too small. It's just about the size of my index finger or the tip of my index finger. And uh, over here, I think that, you know, with the amount of machining and, and, and effort that they put into the body, and the accents, they could have put a little bit more effort into the buttons. Like these buttons are just straight up flat buttons and even the engraving is really, really light. It doesn't really give you any kind of a grip at all. And the concave isn't really that deep. It kind of concaves a little bit and then it flattens out the bottom. So it's actually still very smooth. And the font here looks a little bit cheap. It doesn't really look classy. It just, I don't know, the font just makes it look a little bit cheap. And this, this is the one that pisses me off the most. It's not even in the middle and I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, okay, anyway, so buttons are just a screw fit. Next thing I wanna point out is that yes, trit slots are here milled into the body. You have a total of four for you to install your tritium vials if you're interested in. That's my quick overview of this guy. Let's go a little bit more into detail about the build of this. Now, you have sharp edges here. You have sharp edges here. These triangular cutouts, or I should say the kind of hourglass cutout, feels actually a little bit more sharp than it should because of the machining as well. But it's hard for you to actually get your finger stuck there unless you're kind of like rubbing it upwards this way. And out here, it is a hard edge, but it's not to the point that it's uncomfortable. And I kind of don't know how to explain it to you, but it just, it just doesn't hurt. You see, it doesn't really hurt at all. So that's the thing, if you guys really cannot tolerate even the slightest of sharp corners, then, you know, this is not for you. But before you jump to conclusions, let me just show you guys a spin, okay? This guy is easily getting me five to six minute spins every time, constantly, without fail. And I kid you not. It's really, really comfortable. Way more comfortable than I expected. It's not the most comfortable spinner, I will tell you that. The most comfortable that I've handled so far in terms of comfort is the GP1 and the North Star by United Machining. But this guy is more comfortable than I expected. I mean, look at this. It looks sharp, it looks rugged, it looks fierce. At the same time, it kind of looks classy, silver and gold. And this cutout here makes it look like, like a formal piece, you know, like you could just bring this to a kind of a dinner, you know, like a very, very nice jewelry accessory kind of thing to keep on you or in your pocket and hold it in your hand. It just looks really classy, I'll tell you that. It looks rugged, fierce, yet classy. I don't know how. I never imagined these three words to go together, but yeah, this is how I'm going to describe it. Of course, it suffers from some wobble simply because it is a bar spinner, but not as much as, say, the armed shark spinner. That one has a lot of wobble. This one has a kind of a standard wobble kind of a resonance. So, you know, what can you expect? It is, after all, a bar spinner. But it's very comfortable. I was really, really surprised. I don't know how I'm gonna emphasize that to you guys, but really, this is just really comfortable, especially the edge over here. I love it. All right, so fidgeting wise, fourth finger pulling back, fourth finger pushing forward, it's fine. Gripping it this way, Middle finger pushing it forward, pulling back, it's fine. Even though there are some knurls over here, with your middle finger actually resting like that right here in the corner, this doesn't hurt at all because it's not sharp. You can see it's actually kind of rounded already. Yeah? Right, look, it's all like kind of rounded. Very, very nice detailing, look at that. It's just exquisite. But yeah, you have your middle finger here and it's not gonna be of a problem, look. Because it's not sharp, not at all. When you pull back, oh man, that's my favorite. Every time my finger lands here or on the flat area, it feels so good. I, I don't know guys, I'm just won over by this. Then we have the index finger, pull back and push forward. No problem at all. As you can see, it's easy, simple, and it's not too hefty, but not very light. It's a mid-weight kind of a spinner. Good size, easily pocketable. And I don't know what else to say, guys. This is going for 64 USD. Just head on down to Spin Scene, talk to Roy or Sean, and they will hook you up.
I think that Spinetics also might have these on their site, but I don't know. The last I checked, they were all either sold out or on the waiting list. But uh, Spin Scene, Roy and Sean, if I'm not wrong, they have stocks ready to go. So talk to them if you're interested. I like it. All right, pros and cons time. First of all, I really want to say this, but the design speaks to me. I really, really like the design of this spinner. But I hate the buttons. I really hate the buttons. They stick out like a sore thumb. Look, everything is so exquisite. You've got all these machining marks and you've got all this sandblasted finish and it feels so good and satin. And then you have crappy, plain, it's just <laughs> lightly polished buttons with some light engraving on it. Like, ah. But yeah, the buttons are made of brass as well. I know I forgot to mention that, but yeah. It gives you a little bit of customizing options. If you guys are interested, you can just take out the four, um, you know, accents over here. And some people actually keep it kind of naked. And some people spray a color onto the accents as well and then put it back on to give it a different look. And uh, if you want something that you could always constantly change color with, then I would suggest using Plasti Dip because, you know, you could just peel Plasti Dip off. Yeah, so just cover it in Plasti Dip and then slip it back on. And when you're sick and tired of it, just peel it right off. It's a good size. It's a good weight. Just nice in my opinion for a spinner of this size, made of brass, stainless steel, which is good metals, comes in a pouch like this, going for 64 USD, shipped, shipped guys, 64 with shipping, pretty good. At first, I was really apprehensive about this guy, I didn't know whether I wanted to get it or not, but after I saw my friend Hozin actually post his video, I told myself I have to get one of these, and after purchasing this and having it on my EDC for the past few days, let me tell you this man, I do not regret getting this guy at all. It is of course a bar spinner and I'm a fan of bar spinners, and I'm not a fan of brass, but the machine on this just looks really good. It's one of those that I gladly made an exception for. Oh, I also realized that I didn't highlight this part for you guys. This is all polished over here, here and here. So they are a little bit of a fingerprint magnet if you have sweaty palms. But I guess if you really wanted to, you could scuff it up with some sandpaper or maybe just, uh, you know, like steel wool if you wanted to and give it a brushed look if you want. But yeah, I mean, it's not going to cause you any problem at all. And the winner is really just this edge. These edges here, the... <laughs> I don't know guys, but I, I really enjoy this spinner a lot. And I'm not trying to justify my purchase, you know, spending money on this guy, but I think that for that price, 64 USD shipped, really is not, not bad at all, not a bad choice. And I think that for 64 USD shipped, for a spinner like this, made very well with some beautiful marks on it. Like machining marks are really on point and you can look at that detail that it gives when it's reflecting in the light. Just look at that, it's really beautiful, check it out. And to be able to give you constantly about five to six minute spins, no regret. It is, however, a 688 bearing spinner, so remember that. Uh, not a lot of buttons out there in the market for 688 bearings. And uh, I'm just gonna try and find, I guess, button alternatives for this. So that is the end of my review on the metal jacket, guys. Of course, I will put links in the video description if you're interested in getting them. Once again, thanks so much for watching, guys, and sticking all the way throughout. And I hope that I provided enough information for you to decide whether or not the metal jacket spinner is a spinner for you. For me, I like it and I'm going to keep it. That's my opinion. Alright, catch you in the next slice of my life guys. Bye!